All right, let's see. Hello. Hi. Oh. Okay. Oh, cool. Sorry. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Um. So I see Lisette. I don't see Pamela. I'm not sure. Yeah. This is Sean Hannon from IT. But Pamela's having trouble logging in right now. So um, I'm on here, but I'm on from oh, I'm, um. So I think so, if she just joins in, I'll be able to move her up. Okay. Can I become Actually, co host with uh, yes. Just, yeah. Yes. I will make you co host right now. Thank you, Sean, for your help. Yes, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Trying to uh with with Jennifer leaving Pamela. Um trying to do this. So let me it looks like we're already recording. And I'm sorry, I'm doing this from my phone, so I'm not seeing where I normally see here. Okay. So, um, it does say recording. Um, yeah, so it's recording. Obviously, all viewer in. It looks like it's open to the public. So, Pamela, let me just X. Um, this can connect now. I just want to, while we're trying to figure this out, I just want to um, say to our participants, we apologize for the huge delay. Um, we were having technical difficulties. And as you all can tell, we're still having some technical difficulties, uh, but we will begin shortly and we apologize. Yeah, thanks. The only question I have is there's somebody just listed as call in user one. I don't know if that would be Pamela. Yeah. Let me find out. If you don't mind, I'm going to bring that person in. Okay. And if it's not Pamela, then we can move them back out. Perfect. <laughs> Call in user one, you are muted. If you are Pamela, can you unmute? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know offhand. There is there is a, a number that you dial on the touchtone phone to do it, and I don't okay. remember what it is, unfortunately, off the top of my head. Um, And so we need a participant from the town as a staff member in order to conduct a meeting. You actually don't. I mean, I, I well, I don't believe you do. So oh. if you're, um, if you have a quorum, I don't know. I don't know who the chair is, but if you have a quorum, then I don't. I don't think there's anything. Thing you need anybody from the town. Um, it would just be a if Pamela had something for you. Right. I mean, I think hopefully we would be getting an update from her on um, some things, but um, I guess we can start and see where we get. Okay. Yeah, we need to start um, because we have yeah, sure, yeah, people sure. on. Yeah. So, Allegra, I made you co-host. Is there right. is there somebody else I should make co-host just in uh, case something happens? Deborah, there? please. And and okay. yeah, and me. I'll make you co-host as well, Deborah. And then actually, okay, great. I'm gonna make you host, which will okay. kick me off from being host. But um, and then but once wait, then, and then you're so then. So yeah. then, um, what about this call-in user though? If we don't know that it's that, I it's, don't. Um, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't think that's Pamela. So mm -hmm. I removed the um. 
that person I remove that person from talking to that person. Yeah. Um, All uh, right. Well, um, I think so. I'll continue to work to try and get uh, Pamela on for you, but uh, I don't want to hold up your meeting any longer. So perfect. All right. Well, thank you so okay. much for your help. Yeah. In the interest of time, I am going to call our meeting to order at six fifty-three. Um, this is a meeting of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. We do have a quorum. So pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of, me of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so we will have our announcements, agenda review, public comment, member reports, and then our action and discussion items. Um, Allegra. Yes. Actually, just to interrupt you a little bit, because, you know, obviously we were we were the ones that were late in terms mm -hmm. of all of this and we've had participants on. Can yep. we switch things around and just do the public comment first yes. um, so that then we because I know that there's someone already who wants to speak and. They might have a time commitment. So Perfect. all right. So let us go to public comment. Um, I see one hand up, and that is Lev. I'm going to bring you into the room. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't have the thing written on my thing, but public comment, we're not supposed to talk back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's basically yeah. the gist of the fancy words. Mm -hmm. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I am Lev Benezra. I'm speaking on behalf of the Amherst Survival Center, which is located at 138 Sunderland Road um, in North Amherst. Um, and forgive me, I am uh, in the car and don't have all of my uh, notes in front of me just due to the time delay. But I wanted to, um, I really appreciate the leadership of this committee working to ensure equitable public safety in Amherst. And I wanted to speak today specifically to some of the ways that the MR Survival Center utilizes and benefits from CRESS, um, in part because, or the reason why I feel like it's important to speak to this is because we have really come to rely on them significantly and yet um, do not ever call them via dispatch. Um, and that, that is because we either call them directly on their crest line, or there have also been a number of situations where we call them by turning our heads across the dining room where they're already sitting, building community relationships and kind of flagging them over to assist with something. Um, but for us, really since Cress's implementation, they have provided a wonderful service and support and are often our first call when we need support in order to best support the residents that we are helping. And that includes instances of mental health crisis, um, times where people need help accessing other resources where we don't have that connection point. Um, a really critical source has been being able to actually provide rides and get people to some other resource that they need. And another area that we have come to really rely on them is that there are instances when due to someone's behavior, uh, we need to ask them to leave for the rest of the day, that their behavior is uh, making it, it, is impinging on the access and safety of other participants. And when that person refuses to leave, which does sometimes happen, we used to be left with very few other options other than um, as the situation continued to escalate until we had to call the police. Um, but now we're able in situations like that, able to call Crest much earlier on and they're able to support. And I think both just through their skills in de-escalation and motivational interviewing, but also just as a neutral third party, it's unconnected to any other town department, it's unconnected to us, it's unconnected to the police, that it creates just a different setting for that conversation and people are really willing to listen. Um, so those are just some of the examples of the types of situations. Um, and I wanted to share just two recent examples when we did reach out to them. Um, we had a, a physical, minor physical altercation over by our laundry area. And I was so grateful that it was a day when Crest responders were already there. They were able to provide backup to our staff. So our staff were still the lead people like handling the situation 
but they really helped to ensure that everybody felt listened to, they were able to successfully de-escalate um, and then support that scenario being resolved. Um, we also had a situation that was ongoing for a period of time where one of our regulars who lives with very significant and persistent mental illness, um, her behavior is never overtly harmful to other people, but it frequently is highly disruptive of operations, including to other participants. But when we would ask her to leave or to follow rules, she would not listen. Um, but they were able, again, as that like neutral third party, just able to engage with her and share the same information that we were in a different way. And it really supported just a positive resolution that allows her to be her and to exist and to access a community resource that she really needs and relies on in a way that doesn't impinge on other people's access. So I just wanted to share some of our experiences. Um, I do not have a tally of the number of times that CRESS has responded. Um, if the committee needs, I certainly, more severe incidents in which they've been called uh, do get recorded and I could look for those. Um, but there are also situations where because we call them, we don't end up having an incident. Um, and I don't have an exact count of those, uh, but it, they were really, really grateful for them as a resource. And again, all of those interactions are interactions that existed outside of the dispatch system. So um, really appreciate your, again, your work on public safety efforts um, and wanted to just share that experience of the ways that CRAS has really been instrumental in supporting community members who utilize the Amherst Survival Center and supporting us in being able to do what we do. So thank you. Well, thank you so much, Lev, for joining us. And it was nice to hear about what you have been able to benefit from with Cress. Let's see. I have a Laura Strong with their hand up, so I'm going to bring them into the room. Yes, hello? Yes. Yes, hi, it's actually uh, Laura Mills. Sometimes I use that uh, okay. pseudonym when I don't, wanna, when I wanna remain anonymous, but I couldn't change it. Um, and if you can't hear me well, I can just um, send my comments email, but if you can, I'll You're good so far. Comment. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit talked up, but I just wanted to um, share a few things as a parent. Um, and I did want to speak a little bit about um, some topics about youth empowerment and press. And I know that um, they had a flyer out and they tried to do some outreach to live, but there's still no scheduled um, youth activities um, that were supposed to be scheduled um, for Butternut Farm. So there still seems to be like um, a lag there um, as far as getting them to connect with um, the residents where I live. And also I did watch your last um, meeting um, where I explained how press is being used in the schools and how um, the the call was initiated by the acting, well, the acting superintendent. And um, I still feel I'm not sure what information is being gathered and and what you know what they're observing and what connections they're making and how that information is shared and and why it's shared and so i i still think that there needs to be some clarity around that um and so yeah uh those were two of my my issues or topics um that i just wanted to to share as a parent and as someone in the um, BIPOC community is still a concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I see Ms. Pat. Good evening, everyone. Good Thank evening. you for your time on this committee. I just have two quick comments to make. Can people hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. So I just want to publicly 
um, express my disappointment in the appointment of the new, not new, but the appointment of the police chief. And this is not um, a criticism of the committee. I wanna thank them for their work, but I'm very disappointed that our town manager did not reopen the search. Um, I think it's telling to have a temporary police chief apply for the permanent position. Um, to me, it's just maintaining status quo. I felt that I needed to express that. So I just don't have faith of how our town will move forward when we keep uh, we keep uh, status quo people. The second thing is that I was reading the town manager's um, budget report, something about what he's trying to do with uh, social justice without, you know, uh, putting adequate funding to really make it work. It's just laughable. I just want to point that out. As you know, as folks know, uh, issues of social justice is not a priority for our town manager. He's there to collect his fat salary and enjoy his pension. And so um, I just want to voice that for people to take a look at the budget proposal that he's putting, that he put together. I don't see any major thing to address the so-called uh, equity, inclusion, or whatever you call it in our town. Thank you for your for your time. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Pat. Um, does anybody else wish to make public comment? We will have another opportunity at the end of our meeting. I am not seeing any other hands. Miss Pat and Lauren, I'm gonna put your oh, hands down. I'm so if that's sorry. Okay. Oh I'm no, that's sorry. okay. Sorry. Um do, do. Um, do. So let's see. Um, so does anybody have any announcements? Um, I guess I don't know if this is an announcement or more of a future agenda item, but there was a large protest yesterday at UMass and there were over 130 arrests of students, faculty, and community members. Um, and there were state police, UMass police, and local Amherst police. So I think perhaps this is more of a future agenda item, but I think it would be important to get an understanding of the mutual aid agreements that APD has with both UMass and the state police, especially in terms of large scale events like yesterday, um, which from the coverage that I've seen and observed was certainly, I'm going to say overkill. Um, so I think that's something that it would be interesting to learn a little bit more about. Um, and Deborah and I had talked with the town manager last week, and he had suggested that we reach out to Chief Ting. Um, and I would like to invite him to our next meeting, and um, perhaps we could hear a little bit about the mutual aid that meeting. Yeah, I definitely agree with Allegra that, you know, one, we're, we're, we're publicly stating here that we want um, Chief Ting to meet with us at our next meeting, and we will be reaching out to him um, to schedule that 
And at that meeting, as Allegra stated, we will add uh, mutual aid. What's the mutual aid agreement that um, APD has with uh, UMass? Because I heard that it wasn't just, it was, I guess, state, um, APD, um, obviously UMass, and then Hadley too. There's okay. Hadley there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, whoever it was, there were a lot of police officers. Um, any other announcements? I feel like there is something coming up in May and I can't remember what it is now. Um, well, I guess, uh, Pamela, is there anything going on? Do you all have any announcements? I'm assuming Juneteenth. I'm assuming there's some other events happening. Um, yes, I was going to put that in the DEI uh, updates because that's pretty much all I have for updates. But um, I can do them now if you prefer. Yeah, you can do them now. Yeah, well, well, we'll probably bring up DEI again because obviously we're, we're going to have some more questions besides just what you update us on. But yeah, right. in terms of announcement, you can go ahead. Right. So there are um, three events that are in the works. Um, the AAPI, which will be on May 19th, and that's Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, uh, the Race Amity Youth Hero and um, Old Young Basketball or the Community Basketball Tournament is happening on June 9th. On June 13th, there will be a, um, a flag raising and panel discussion on the 20th anniversary of the Goodrich decision. And then the Juneteenth um, celebrations, which um, are still being finalized, so. There are. Is there a date for that one, though? The Juneteenth. Um, it it hasn't been finalized yet. So. And what uh, was the other one? Twentieth anniversary of what? The Goodrich decision. Ma marriage equality. Oh, the marriage equality one. Okay. Yeah. So the um there are uh, announcements flyers on the website for two of the events. Um, the other ones have not made it to the town's website yet, as we've been trying to finalize some details. Yeah, if you could also share whatever flies you have with our committee, and then so we can get it out to our networks, that would be great. Sure. So I don't have any other announcements beyond that. Okay, I think we can move on, all right. Oh, wait, one second, I'm, I'm muted. No, I'm good. Um, I know Lauren had actually shared with me two opportunities um, for youth, one May 20th at the Bang Center at five, which is a poetry and spoken word um, to deepen emotional intelligence through writing May 20th, five to seven at the Bang Center. And then the other is a mental health 101 workshop Thursday, May 16th from four to six at the Bang Center. Um, and those is that good for, for youth, for young people? Yep. It looks like they are put on by the recreation department. Okay. Thanks. Um, We did public comment. There were there were no minutes to approve, correct? So, um, Lego, I don't know if you see this, but Lauren's hand is still raised. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I think she might have just forgotten to oh, take okay. it. Okay, gotcha. Um, all right, let's see. So that minutes so that reminds me. Um. I know Jennifer had been taking minutes and Jennifer is not here. I don't know if there is a person that um, 
wants to take them. I take notes, but I sometimes if I'm talking or if I'm yeah, doing that. Yeah, then, that's why we can't be the ones to do yeah. it. But I, can, I don't even think we can. Yeah, as co-chairs, we're trying to like facilitate. You would take minutes, Lisette? Yeah, I take Although. notes too. So I'll take minutes. Perfect. Oh, that'd be great. Right, thank you so much. So uh, on that point, though, though, to Pamela, uh, we just want to make sure that the recordings um, get put on um, right after the meeting. Uh, there shouldn't be lag in terms of the recordings getting put up for the public. There's so, a lot of people that want to that want to know what we're talking about. So mm -hmm. um, I've been getting kind of, you know, feedback on that, that the recordings go up like later than, than usual. The, well, the recordings are all handled internally by IT, and they should be posted. Um, they post them all on the Friday uh, um, of the week of all of the meetings that are, occur are posted on um, on the Friday of that week. So I don't have any control over when the when the meeting when the recording is posted. So Friday, what time? I mean, what what oh, is the situation? What are they yeah. doing? Yeah, I I don't know the time. I haven't paid that close of attention, um, but there, it's all done through IT at one time for all of the, for all of the meetings, the public meetings that occur during, during the week. I can try to locate, or, you know, I can ask Sean the, what time they're generally posted, but that's, it's an IT function. They do them all at one time. And yeah. Well, what, what, well, what I want to request is to see if, yeah, if it could be put on, if it is on a Friday, obviously I understand that they have other committees, but if they're going to be doing it all at one time, if that indeed is the case, um, then, you know, for it to be posted as soon as possible on Friday, um, because, you know, that obviously this is a committee that deals with um, social justice, equity, and safety of the community, which is obviously, you know, first on people's minds. And so people want to get this information, you know, I get inquiries from people that want to get this, like, you know, the next morning type of thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, what I can do is ask Sean Hannon, who's the director of IT, when the, um, when the recordings are generally posted on the town's website, but mm -hmm. I cannot guarantee that there are, you know, request a specific time for posting of this committee because he's going to do it all as one function. Okay. Well, um, yeah, if you can, I guess what would be helpful would be if when you communicate with Sean, can you copy myself and Allegra in on it? Because I just want to, you know, make sure what what is what in terms of um, the recordings getting posted. Sure. I can ask him to contact you directly. No, no. When you contact him, just, just copy us and then I can follow up with questions mm -hmm. if I have any. Thanks. I am just realizing that um, Jennifer's announcement came after our last meeting. So just in case members of the public weren't aware, Jennifer Moyston, who was our staff liaison and the assistant director of DEI, has moved on to a new position outside of the town. Um, and she will be, the, is it the director of community engagement at 80, 80 Acres? acres. I'm not sure um, what that position is. Mm -hmm. So she has had her last day with the town of Amherst and is no longer our staff liaison, which is a big loss for us. Um, and we wish her well if she's out there listening. Um, but I just wanted to make that announcement publicly um, in case people didn't know. Yeah, and no, I'll just tag. I was actually going to um, talk about in our member reports because actually Allegra and I were there. Uh, at her going away um, reception. And yeah, it's just a huge, huge loss to to the town. The institutional knowledge, you know, just her helpfulness and openness and, you know, just the incredible work that she's done up until this point. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure how things are going to move forward. And obviously one of the questions for Pamela today, DEI and you know, the fact that there hasn't been much movement and now Jennifer is not um, here to 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 assist. So there's going to be, I'm assuming, more delays. So, um, you know, obviously wish Pamela well, um, but another word too for the town, 
that really is just like you all don't have that many BIPOC people working for you and especially great BIPOC people working for you. And then, you know, and then you lose someone like like um, like Jennifer. So it's another thing in terms of looking at the town and really seeing, you know, is it indeed welcoming towards BIPOC people? And that's a question that I pose to the town. Do we, do we want to go to member reports? Sure. So um, I guess I'll I'll start just by saying that um, Allegra and I went to meet with uh, the town manager with Paul. I mean, we'll probably touch upon some certain aspects as we go through our agenda too, because obviously mm -hmm. we asked him different things in, in regards to our agenda. Um, but it was really a conversation to ask them, especially around the budget, right? For all the different recommendations for CSWG. Um, and, you know, some of which, you know, there's no budget for like the multicultural center, there's no budget. And even for this next um, a budget cycle, there was no budget put in for it. Um, and then obviously resident oversight board, it has some budget, but nothing has happened with the resident oversight board. And then, um, and then the Youth Empowerment Center, which obviously there's budget for. And again, you know, there hasn't been any traction there either. Um, so of course we're gonna talk more about it, but these were some of the things that, you know, uh, um, we discussed with with um, Paul. We also talked about uh, Chief Ting's appointment, which we will, do we have that on the? We do. We, do we, we have that on the agenda? We do. Oh, in terms of the letter, right? That we're going yep. to be talking because, yeah, and and we'll talk more about it. But really, the 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 gist of it of it was how is it that you do a national search? You hire a consultant group to get everyone's feedback and the and and communities feedback. Um, so time and 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 costs and investment, and then you hire an internal candidate. You know, well, one, you end up with two people, and then at the end of the day, you hire an internal candidate. So my thing is, why waste everyone's time and just not hire the internal candidate right off the bat, um, as opposed to, uh, you know, going through that whole kind of rigmarole for 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 an internal candidate to be hired. So um, obviously, we had some, you know, conversation in regards to that and you know, and the fact that he said, you know, obviously there wasn't that many, too many choices and and they had to go back to the, um, they had to go back to um, looking at candidates and so on and so forth. But me, my thing is you only have two candidates and then you end up with internal candidate, then you go back and you keep searching again. You just don't, you know, pick someone internally because of whatever, you know? So, so um so yeah so we discussed that and then you know discussed obviously Cress and um you know the fact that we want Cress to be successful and um having more um calls dispatched to Cress and so on and so forth but we can talk more about it as we continue the conversation oh and well one one of the main things too though that I I said to Paul was how come he hasn't um, come to meet with CSSJC? Uh, we've invited him ad nauseum to come meet with us. And, and you know, and he responded that, you know, obviously he's a bit busy person. He has a lot of committees, but I reaffirmed the fact that our committee deals with safety and social justice issues, equity, um, you know, diversity, inclusion, and which, you know, should be a top priority, right? Um, especially after George Floyd's murder, where the town, you know, did the whole commitment and so on and so forth. And so once you have a, a committee that actually deals with it, um, I, I think it would be important to prioritize and make time to actually meet with us, as opposed to, you know, us having to take our time to meet with him. This is, I guess, a question to members of the committee, but have every ha, has everybody been able to make an appointment with Camille to meet with her one on one? Did the I think Kinga was the responder who reached who should have been reaching out? 
I, I saw yeah, that. I made an appointment. I saw okay. the invitation, but I didn't make an appointment yet. Okay. I just canceled my appointment, but um, Kinga will be reaching out with her okay. schedule for the following week. Okay. But everybody received the communication. Okay. That just following up on. Yeah, I'll be meeting. I'll be meeting with her on Friday. Okay. Me as well. Okay. Um, any other member reports? I don't know if I should add, um, I don't know if this is a member report, but given that it was part of the police search committee, do we, if I want to say something, but should we wait till we talk, talk about the police search committee or the police part of it or should I do um. it? You, if you feel like you want to say it now, you can say it now. So, um, hmm. so the response is that um, while the decision was left to um, the town manager, I almost feel as if that he didn't really make the decision because we had a committee that went through all the resumes that were submitted and we could have submitted, um, we could have decided not to submit um, Chief Tings as a candidate um, internal, but in fairness to him, um, he was qualified. And um, I do appreciate and understand um, I, the BIPOC community's position with um, Chief Ting being the status quo and essentially following um, the previous chief. But when we met with him um, and in fairness to him, um, he said quite frankly that he had a job that he was not the chief of police. And that is true. Um, he's assigned responsibilities. And as following the chain of command, he did his responsibilities. We pressed him um, very clearly on um, social justice, um, the BIPOC community, um, what he would do as a chief of police. And he quite frankly said that we should give him a chance. Um, and so he can actually do um, things that he thinks he needs to do. And while that, um, I, I appreciate that people may have wanted to go in a different direction but one of the reasons why we had such a limited pool is because neighboring towns were hiring chief of police at the same time. We lost a few candidates who quite frankly accepted positions before we interviewed them. And so um, we um, had, we made the decision to go forward with what we had, some of the recommendations. We did heavily discuss and debated whether or not we should reopen um, the search. And I can tell you that when we did the initial search, it was a national search. It wasn't just a local search. And we had applicants from as far as Wisconsin and New York and Ohio. And we reviewed all their resumes and the committee as a whole met. And for anyone that's listening, just to add some comfort to the search committee, um, there were the committee was majority minority um, for the record. And so we gave everyone's resume um, the appropriate time that and commitment that it required the committee to review and analyze and then make a decision. And then we invited people for interviews. Um, again, we lost some, some interviewed, and then we came down to the two and we felt that we provided um, counsel to um, what we consider the best two choices. Now, um, having said that, I think it's very important that as a committee, we do the work of the committee and we hold him responsible as chief because he is the chief now. And he, he doesn't get to say now that, um, you know, he isn't the chief and he was doing things based on his job. Um, we have the charge to make sure that, you know, equity, social justice is at the forefront. And I think we should do that. And I think we should continue to hold him responsible for um, the police department because it is now his police department. 
Um, but I also would suggest that um, I, I read the letter, which I thought was absolutely brilliant, that we make the recommendations that we do and we say um, we're giving you the benefit of the doubt because we do understand that when you work for somebody else, um, there is there's not that many things that you can do um, outside of the chain of command. But now that you are that person, you committed to doing all these things. And we're here to make sure that you follow through on that commitment. And yes, um, the town manager could have gone a different direction um, and go with an extended national search, um, but would have been left, it, it is also very possible that would have been left with the same outcome and the same results. And the committee, the search committee weighed that option. And because we had the option to say, either pass on these finalists and extend the search and the committee as a whole voted to say, let's not pass because we did our own research independent of town manager to say what is out there. We reached out to appropriate um, police groups to post these jobs. Um, we had feedback from people that says, here are some minority um, job posting boards that you know have leadership that we can look into. And we posted the job there and we didn't get that many responses from those postings. And we also felt that we may not get um, more um, responses if we extended the search. And we didn't want to, and, and we knew of course that there would be um, concerns and questions and we were comfortable with that. We didn't want to, to Deborah's point, we had a search committee um, of all the things um, didn't want to just restart everything from scratch because um, we did go to, I, I, I actually met with um, Paul before we did anything final and raised my concerns um, about, you know, on behalf of the committee to say extend the search or not extend the search. And I didn't make the argument that we should continue searching understanding everything that the committee as a whole without the town manager found that it was a very difficult, for the job that we were hiring for, it was a very difficult position to fill. Um, people were, quite frankly, um, discouraged sometimes from applying because there was an internal candidate. And I don't think it was fair to say ignore, you know, not give the internal candidate interview because he's an internal candidate because he is qualified um, for the position. Um, I think, um, so some feedback was, you know, the job is just gonna go to the internal candidate. And that was not what we went in there intending to do, but we presented what we thought were the best options and there was a split or among members as to who um, we we would choose, but in the end, that was not our decision. What we came to collectively as a committee is that either of these people that we submitted could do the job. And that was the ultimate decision that we made. Um, and when we made that recommendation, we were comfortable with both people um, that we recommended to the town manager and to say, whomever he chose, we felt collectively that either person would be able to do the job. Now, whether or not that job aligns with the BIPOC community, um, that's a whole different aspect of that. But again, as a committee, um, you know, we have the ability to say and ask and make requests and hold responsible the things that he does as a chief. And I think we should continue to do so. Um, but I just wanted to provide some rationale and some background into how the search committee went for people that have concerns and for the committee, the BIPOC committee that are listening. Thank you, Avril. Avril, um, yeah, I wanted to kind of just touch upon some of those points. Um, and I know, you know, obviously we're going to be talking about the letter and everything else. Um, and, you know, thank you for sharing this information, especially publicly, because obviously we need, we need to talk about these things publicly. Uh, and discuss it. You know, first and foremost, I want to say it. I don't. I don't have anything personal towards gating. Nothing like that, right? For me, it's about the role, the position, and what are you going to do as the head of Amherst Police Department. And I'm going off of work that I did at CSWG 
and now in CSSJC and countless voices through town forums and you know the, the work from Seventh Gen uh, uh, Movement Collective in terms of the fear and intimidation that people have had from people from those folks that have been at the APD um, you know, for, for these years. So for me, it's nothing in terms of Ting in, in, in terms of that. However, he has been the one that has been there throughout these years. He has been the one that has been there with these other chiefs who have done lackluster jobs. And he has been trained by these chiefs. And while we were there, there was uh, uh, um, the union representative who basically stated that, right? That 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 they were supportive of Ting because he would continue on in the same kind of you know lineage as the other chiefs. That's concerning to me, right? And so I I hear you. Obviously, I, as a search, you know search committee, I understand exactly what search committees need to do because obviously in my job previously at, at UMass when I oversaw the Office of Equal Opportunity Searches with it was within my office, and you know you got to go through the criteria. I know that Ting is qualified to do the job. The, the point of the matter is whether he'll be able to actually change the department to actually be able to be an anti-racist Amherst Police Department. I want to see Ting state that publicly and then take steps to, to change the Amherst Police Department because that's what we were looking for, right? That was the hours and hours of talking to a consultant, meeting with a consultant, and so on and so forth for for. For, for, for someone that has been there and has been part of the status quo for within the Amherst Police Department now to be selected as, as the next chief. So yes, obviously he's the next chief. We're gonna have to work with him and I am. I'm ready, willing, and able to work with, with Chief Ting. And that's why I, I started this meeting by saying, you have an invitation for our, next, for our next meeting. Because I asked him very pointedly during the candidate forum, why didn't you speak up during the July 5th situations? Why haven't you met with CSSJC? And he, you know, conveniently or not, uh, or however you put it, said, well, I wasn't, you know, and I wasn't, and I wasn't. Okay, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't. Now you are. So now I want to see what's going to happen. But my thing is, is that I'm tired. I'm tired of working. I'm, I'm always tired of struggling and having to, to go against the grain. Right. So I, so there might be some going against the grain with this when 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 you have someone like Chief Ting, who has been part of Amherst Police Department. And I haven't heard anything of him doing anything different than what the others did before him. OK, so for me, it's kind of like, OK, it's going to be really surprising. I, it would be a pleasant surprise if Chief Ting is totally different, which I'm hopeful. Right. Very hopeful of that. But I'm also tired of the resistance, right? Of the resistance that 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 is within APD in terms of being an anti-racist department and showcasing that, not just saying it, because that would be the first step of saying it, but then showcasing it, right? In terms of how are you actually going to be an anti-racist department? And so, yes, I'm going to be holding Ting to that, right? So in terms of the town manager, though, he had two candidates. And so he did have a decision to make and he chose the internal candidate. So that's on him, right? In terms of the search committee, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously it is what it is, but for me, it would have been, hey, you know what? There's two, maybe we do need to go back and, and broaden the search, go look under all the nooks and crannies and the rocks and, and so on and so forth. Cause you know, I, I know when I, you know, worked as part of Equal Opportunity University at UMass and, you know, what we would have, you know, we would be interacting with search committees. There was always search committees that came back and said, well, we couldn't find any diverse candidates. We could, well, guess what? Go back and continue recruiting. Continue, 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 right? So that you can diversify the pool. Because that, that's always, you know, we're always going to be with situations that are untenable. Obviously, we've gone through a pandemic. This is a difficult job, right, with, the, with this police department. However, it's a it's a serious job. It's a job that people are walking around with guns on the side of their of their waists. You see what I'm saying? That has a message. And I remember when I spoke with Paul, when Allegra and I met with Paul, and Paul basically said to me, you know, and Allegra, hopefully you all will also meet with with Ting on a one on one basis and really, you know, work to collaborate, you know, as opposed to being confrontational and so on and so forth. 
And my thing isn't about being confrontational. My thing is about, you know, um, you know, talking with Ting, meeting with him to, to discuss these things and to, um, yeah, well, I'm all about collaborating. Let's collaborate away. But the thing is, is that it is urgent. The time is now, right? Because there's people who are afraid and intimidated and whose voices have been silenced. And young people out there who look like us, that whose voice and voices have been silenced and continue to be silenced. So for me, I, I, I you know, and, and for me as a black woman, I, I don't have time to waste. It is urgent. And we talked about that. We talked about that with Paul, right? The color of my skin, when I get stopped by the police, it's a whole different story, right? I don't see the police as someone that's going to come and help me out. And a lot of people don't understand that, right? When I get stopped by the police, I fear for my life. Let's put that out there, okay? It's not it's not the same in terms of 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 you know realities and 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 what we go through experiences. So for me, I don't have time to be here, right? I have a 20 year old who I'm afraid for every day. I have a 14 year old that I'm afraid for every day because they are black males in this country. So, but yes, I will I will work with Tank. No, not a problem, not an issue, but I will voice my concerns in terms of this whole process and how everything transpired. And, 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 that's, and that's very reasonable. Um, and I, I, I agree with you hundred percent that, you know, when people of color get stopped by the police, including myself, um, there is a genuine fear and a real fear because again, we see what happens. And I think those are pressing things that we should address with him like right away. One of the things that, um, I learned being on the search committee is that Amherst does sector policing. And we have to fully understand why that is done. And the answer that we were given was that, you know, they get more calls from the BIPOC community than anywhere else. And so that is part of their rationale. And I, I think that's something that as a committee, we should explore and get in like, you know, public information as to see, okay, if you do sector policing, then let's look at the nature of the calls that's coming from the community, the communities that you say they're coming from, and why you think there needs to be a heavier police presence in in minority neighborhoods, and so we we need to be um, very informed and hold them to that to say, okay, if your if your position is you're here because people from here call you more, and the data doesn't support that, then we know they're just full of BS. And, you know, we we target that. And so, again, reading the letter, yes, I think there are some immediate things that we should address with him. Um, the, the stops I thought was great um, in the letter. Um, I, I wrote down specifically hearing about sector policing. And I think that is something that we should very much look into because that is very interesting. And it would be very interesting to see um, the rationale behind that. Is it something that, to your point, was implemented by old way of thinking, old chiefs, and it just never got changed, even though there's nothing there to support the need for sector policing anymore? Yeah. The seventh generation collective, a, a lot of that information that they gathered, they really highlighted, right? A lot of the sector policing that basically it's not, um, you know, um, the, the neighborhoods calling in for, for the police, but really just the police surveying those communities, right? And the yeah. communities I'm talking about are communities that look like me, BIPOC communities and other BIPOC folks. So like you said, yes, those are some of the things we need to inquire about. And and he was, you know, he he, he didn't shy away from, um, one of the things that was also, um, illuminating was that um and and I know he, he was applying for a job but you know he did welcome the resident oversight board um and I I, I I can say that um publicly because it is a public job public interview um he 
he did welcome having the resident oversight board. So I saw that that is in the budget for 2025. So um, I think that was also something that we pressed the town on to move as quickly ahead as possible to form that resident oversight board, because then that will give um, more clarity um, into what the police does because the community will have that resident oversight board where they can voice all those concerns. Any other thoughts before we continue? Forward? I don't think so. I mean, do you guys want to put the letter up now since we've been talking about it and then we can go to Crest or do we want to talk about Crest first? Well, I guess we could probably finish it since we just started the conversation. Yeah, with the letter and then we'll go into Crest. Can everybody see the letter? Um. So I think the first part of it is kind of the reflections we had about going through a search process and then having the internal candidate be chosen. Again, not necessarily a reflection of an opinion related to Chief Ting, um, because we do need to have Chief Ting as an ally if we're going to make the changes that we want to see. Um, so I guess. So my, my, my feeling was on that first paragraph, and mm -hmm. this is not giving them a pass, is um, I, I would suggest um, softening that tone a little bit um, with saying that, OK, while we were disappointed that the town manager chose to go with the internal candidate, we understand that there was a search committee independent of the town manager that made a recommendation that included the internal candidate. And again, while we're disappointed that this is the outcome, um, CSSJC um, is committed to working with um, the new chief of police. And we ask that, you know, for the community that is usually marginalized that this new chief of police appreciate understand where your community is coming from and give that community a chance. So you're saying like a whole rewrite of this first, uh, it would be basically all of the paragraphs then. And I can take a stab at it. Um, yeah, but I don't know if I necessarily want to soften the language. <laughs> I guess I would I guess I would go with the with, with the group, but I'll put it out there that I don't want to soften the language, but obviously I'll do whatever the committee wants to do. But you know, the consulting team that um I, I get the the sessions for the consulting team, but the consulting team weren't the ones who um essentially conducted the interviews. Um <laughs> So it's. No. I mean, we get that, Everett, but it's just the process of the fact that you go and, and have this consulting team gather all this information and so on and so forth. It's just a frustration, right? You're trying to build trust with the community, right? And say that you want change and you want something different and you're about social justice and so on and so forth. And you bring in the consultant group, just like what's been happening with the, you know, resident oversight board and, you know, the, 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 the kind of like, you know, just a lot of time and effort, right? And then yet and still we have no resident oversight board, right? And so yet and still we ended up with an internal candidate after this whole rigmarole. So only, it's just a level of frustration. And, and I understand that. My only concern is that the way it is written, it suggests that we should never even have given the internal candidate the opportunity to apply for the job. And that... And that is well, not anyone can apply for the job. But the thing is, like you said, right, I, I think it just sends a message. Like you said, I think you said it right that the that there were a lot of candidates that didn't even apply once they knew there was an internal candidate. So it cuts both ways. Right. So it's kind of like, OK, some didn't even apply. There was a, an internal candidate because they basically felt like. He, he's a shoe in. This is just a, 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 a something we're going through. 
Obviously, we didn't think so, right? That's why we took part, and that's why we're stating it. We took part in the whole thingamajiggy because for me, I was actually like invested <laughs> in the process. <laughs> so I'm not saying that that thing shouldn't have been included. Like I said, he did have the qualifications. Anyone who has a qualification, you do. I understand the, the rules of, of a search. You do. But the, the point of the matter is, though, it's just like you you also need to have options. You also need to have this and that and the third. So it's kind of like, you know, they. I guess the town didn't want to appear like they didn't do anything that, that was like just about going towards thing. I get that. But at the end of the day, that is what resulted, right? And that's why a lot of times candidates don't apply when there's an inter internal candidate because the decision has already been made. And, but, but in, in this particular case though, um, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but it's, I, I'm, I'm just concerned that, you know, like, and, and if we look at it from a broader perspective, ignoring the chief of police, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, a, a catch 22, because, you know, what if the person was, um, a minority candidate and they were applying for a promotion. I, I don't want it to be perceived as, um, okay, this person shouldn't have even been considered. I, again, I hear you that, you know, you understand his qualifications, but the way it is written, I I just don't want it to be viewed. And, and this should go, I you know, be sent to the chief of police as well. Um, that, hey, we didn't even want you to be considered at all. And it, and it kind of sounds that way. So we, we are asking for change and Well, yeah. Like I said, I've I've already kind of made my my statements in regards to this. I mean, like I said, uh, I'll go with the with what the what the majority wants. But I've already made my statements. I'm I'm fine with it as is. Um. So, but obviously, like I said, I can get outvoted. That's fine. But I'm not changing. I I like the letter just the way it is. So, Everald, if we came to some sort of middle ground, because it seems like maybe there were a few steps that feel like they're missing between the consultant team and the internal candidate being appointed, if we put something in about there was a search committee who ultimately identified two candidates um, after attempting multiple rounds of diversifying the pool I mean is that an accurate way of describing the process so the the again and again the feedback was for change and in the end the internal candidate was appointed I'm, I'm perfectly fine with <laughs> with that um because yes that is that is our position change but we went with the status quo um I I, I think you know the, the last sentence may be the issue for me mostly um, because it's, um, I, again, the committee could have said that we didn't like Chief Ting at all or acting Chief Ting at the time at all and didn't submit it, submit him as a candidate to the town manager. Mm -hmm. um, because the town, again, he did not determine the outcome I, if if we hadn't submitted him as a candidate, he would not have been the chief of police. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um so your concern is more about possibly striking that sentence. Yeah. Because the outcome was never guaranteed to be him. Mm -hmm. 
At least that's what you hope. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I think, you know, I, I think it's um, maybe more to, to say, you know, while we are concerned and somewhat disappointed, um, we do look forward to working with the new chief. Um, we, we are committed to giving him a chance and we will hold him to that same um, responsibility to give the BIPOC community um, a chance as well. So, uh, I don't know what just happened. Oh, I need to enable that thing. Huh? Okay. Let's see. Yeah, concerned and disappointed. Um, I don't think that's far. I don't think that's. I think that's reasonable. Um, if 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 the tone is like while. Well, it's disappointing that after a nationwide search, we maintain the status quo. We may, would that work yeah. for you, Deborah? That wording. I mean, whatever you all decide at this point. I mean, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm gonna, I already said what I was, what I, what I wanted. So, um, whatever you all decide, I'm actually going to step away for a little bit. I'll be back. Because you know we still do ha we 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 have to work with um, the Amherst Police Department, and we don't want the perception that we're hostile, because that's not what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're trying to hold people responsible, and it doesn't come from a place, it doesn't come from a place of hostility. It comes from a place of history and mistrust. So um, while we are disappointed that following the nationwide search, the town is maintaining the status quo. We are committed to working with the new chief and give him the opportunity to foster change and um, well, we are disappointed the foundation was surged, the town has maintained the status quo. We're committed to working with the new chief to foster change and we are hoping and, and we expect that he will be open to those changes. I don't think it necessarily changes the entire paragraph. Um, mm -hmm. I think it, it, I mean, I don't think it necessarily changes the tone either, but it makes it more receptive. I am okay with that change. Um, I think that, I think? like the idea of adding something at the bottom about the, sector policing so it would that be kind of like review the necessity of sector, sector policing, policing. Okay. yeah Liz, are you fine with that language in the first paragraph um i am i'm kind of on the same page as you are in regards to the first paragraph. Okay. So do you do you think that that language is acceptable to set? Yes, yeah, so we are going to leave the again and again and then we're we're going to keep that sentence. 
the yes. again and again sentence? Yes. I think so. Okay. I think we sh I think we should. I mean, it's it, it is a reality that the community, the BIPOC community, um, voices. So I, I think it emphasizes, you know, the point. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yes, I'm. I'm okay with what Allegra just added. Okay. The second paragraph, I had no issues with at all. Okay. Third paragraph, I'm also fine with. And then the, the union support, um, I only have one um, comment because our voices have once again been silenced. Um, I, I don't necessarily, um, that, that last sentence troubles me a little bit, only because- You know, all, this, all the sentences that trouble you are the ones that I put in. <laughs> I hope I now have a problem saying it. I'm putting it yeah. right out there. Yeah. Because I'm sorry. It, it it is what it is. But hopefully though, you know, it's being recorded so that yeah. So that people know exactly where I stand. So um I, I don't think it's necessarily that it's been silenced. And I say that looking at the makeup of the search committee. So what, what I'm talking about is the voices in terms of the community voices, all of the, all of the different people who have said that they want change and they want something different. That's what I'm talking about. Not the search committee voices, not even our voices. I'm talking about the community's voices. Because those are all the people that at least I represent when I talk about and when I talk in this committee. Okay. Then what if we no. changed our to community? I mean, we are part of the community, but yeah. Would that I mean, would that feel reasonable to both of you or? I think the community, um, I, I think if we say the community, it reinforces the larger community versus our voices. Um, so yeah, um, the silence part was the issue part for me, but I will, I'm fine with the community's voices once again being silenced. Yeah. Would you be okay with that, Deborah? I would keep on asking me these questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, you all can go ahead and make the changes. So we did add review the necessity of sector policing as another thing we'd like to see Ting work on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's good. Okay. I'm not, I'm now feeling like I want this whole paragraph to be like somewhere up in this paragraph. I don't know why. Um, because I feel like it's kind of talking about the same thing. 
if we're talking about the status quo and people saying we can maintain what other chiefs have done before. The, the hope paragraph or I, the therefore paragraph i don't know if it makes more sense to put to em, embed that like right there you just have to see if the flow works so yeah, hold on one second i'm just gonna and Please hold. I don't know why. That's not what I was trying to do. Put it right there. So that makes sense. It made sense in my brain, but now I've put it in a sentence. But then I don't know if it flows into the next one, though. <laughs> Should I undo what I just did? If I can figure out what I just did to undo. <laughs> I mean, I think. I think what if. I think in a way this is the talking about some of the changes like things put forward by 7 Gen and CSOEG um but if we don't feel like that flows we can undo whatever it was that I just did Or do we, I mean, these paragraphs were fine, but do we need them? What do you mean? Do we need which which paragraphs? The one that starts with the chief, the chief of police search and then the quote from the Rob report.
I guess. Why would we take them off? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I'm fine with leaving it the way it is. Yeah. Are people okay with this paragraph? Does it make sense? The first one. Yeah, but now that I switched it around a little bit, or does it not make sense? I feel like my brain is not functioning right now. No, I think it's fine the way you wrote it. It's good. And then in terms of, let's say, let's just write accept. I think the whole paragraph is perfect the way it is. Okay. Deborah did that paragraph. And the recommend, I mean, the recommendations are pulled from part A and part B of CSWG and then the addition of the sector policing. Um, so are we feeling okay about this as a letter? So I can, I, I think I can tell um, in, in number five, um, I, I think after um, all this nationwide killing, I, I think there's a use of force policy that um, had been adopted by the, by the police department. And I think they have to, they had to have adopted it to be an accredited police department, which Amherst PD is. Um, so maybe um, not do a rewrite, but um, ask for the policy just to see um, what the policy is. Um, but I think they had to have complied with the use of the, the use of force policy to be considered um, essentially a good police department or in compliance with um to be accredited. And I and I I wrote that down in my search committee notes when I did the research. Um but we can, you know, so it it's I think it's okay to leave it there, but just as an FYI for people. There are certain things that used to be okay that are no longer that are no longer okay that they had to have adopted and i think again this is based off of the leap report which at this point is almost three years old so it might be that new policies have come out since then but i think leap was looking at the policies prior to crest being a thing right deborah is that correct is my timeline that what that the the leap report happened in like 2021 is that right yeah it was part of the part b of cfwg so yeah we relied on leap to kind of really look at the policies and best practices mm -hmm. um at the time as to you know the recommendations that we made i didn't understand b the consent searches part so again that was a recommendation from leap to eliminate and well yeah them. yeah because that one use of force uh, i know that they were saying to look at the policies um and and make sure that they were in compliance um mm -hmm. and so you know i, I don't know where, where, where that's at right because it's been years consent searches is just in terms of the police when they do a stop right basically saying you know do you consent to a search a lot of times people are nervous they're intimidated they're afraid and they say yes, you know what I'm saying? And so that was a, a huge part of no, you know, we need we need to eliminate and prohibit the police being able to ask for consensual searches because, you know, that's not, the, the power dynamic is such that, you know, most often people are like, well, what, what can I do, what am I right? Can I say no, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, prohibit and eliminate. So I understand that, but I think we should make sure that um, we're very, what you said was very 
specific and to the point. And I think that's what we should say. Um, maybe in subtext is to say, um, or frankly, tell people that, you know, you do not have to consent to any search or quite frankly, um, don't even, hmm, it's, I think we should write it the way you just said it. Yeah. <laughs> Because there's gonna there there are gonna be different consent searches, so um, I think if I understand it's consent searches in like a motor vehicle stop, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we should put that in there then. Yeah, because with us that's what we were dealing with it was more yeah. the motor vehicle. And then the low level and pretext stops or something like if you're. And then we should also for C put in parentheses um, racial profiling. Mm -hmm. Because pretext stops are racial profiling. And then creating the online dashboard so that vehicle stops are easily tracked by race, again, to address racial profiling. And then decoupling traffic enforcement from the police department. I, this was for things like that weren't like an OUI or something like that, but is that right? Well, if they, yeah, if they weren't, if, if it was, you know, if it's something where they're you know, there's some violence or there's something like that, you know, it's almost kind of like what we're doing with Cress and the APD. Right. But right now, most of the traffic stops don't include anything like that, right? right. Um, and it's the police that handle it as opposed to it being really, we were envisioning this being part of Cress mm -hmm. eventually, right? Where they have these kind of traffic, um, you know, um, controllers or traffic, whatever name we came up with it. Mm -hmm. monitors traffic monitors um that are unarmed and are basically just you know um stopping people when you know they're for, for other issues and things like that you know um mm -hmm. it's because we know that with a lot of traffic stops um that's when the there's that danger of you know, the racial profiling and someone being, having this really fearful, intimidating, you know, experience with the police, which sometimes leads to a bad situation. After after number seven, can <laughs> we add the, uh, the new number seven that you have? Can we add, um, commit to maintaining that every stop by the police is audio and video recording. Do they have the dash cam they to do, do that? M MRSPD the does body cams? They, do they have don't body have cams. body cams yet, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. They do. They do? Yes. They have body cams? I, I believe I believe they do, yes. Oh. Because usually when they come up to your car, they will tell you this is being audio and video recorded. So yeah, they do have body cams. Yeah. You should put all. Oh my gosh. I don't know why the A won't go. Yeah. A. There we go. It's too late for typing. Um, yeah, you wanted you to put all the recording of all traffic stops. And then pilot confirmation of racial identity rather than assumption, meaning you ask the person what their race is rather than visually deciding 
for them. Correct. Yeah. And, and with this one, we, we went with a piloting it um, mm -hmm. to see how it works because obviously it could be a double-edged sword. It could go wrong where right. then the police officer is actually using, you know, once they know that the person is, you know, um, the, their race or whatever their race is, then obviously they can use that to kind of make the experience even more negative. Or mm -hmm. let's say if the police officer just, um, you know, uh, forces the person to reveal their, their racial identity, it still has to be volunteer, right? Mm -hmm. So you're just inviting. So they would have a script to be able to, what to say so that they invite the person to disclose the, their, their race, they don't have to. All right, and is the ending okay? Um, I can't tell. Yeah. Are you frozen? I, I, I'm not frozen. It's okay. <laughs> the yeah. So um these recommendations will work towards a reduction in the size and scope of the department to better serve everyone in Amherst. Um I, I, I think when you know they hear reduction in size and scope, that raises alarms for people losing their jobs or and I and I get it, we you know, we don't need a large police force. Mm -hmm. Well, that's always been our recommendation. Sales WG, that was a recommendation to, to um, reduce the size of the Amherst Police Department as Crest um, became established and, and grew. And obviously, once they actually dispatch all the calls to Crest, then there won't be a need for such a large Amherst Police Department. We did not say through any type of termination. It would be through natural, just you no know, people retire, people leave, you don't rehire. Um, even though that's gone to deaf ears because they've been rehiring all along since we made that recommendation. So maybe we say then um, e exactly that. Um, these recommendations, maybe use a word, will streamline the departments to better serve everyone in Amherst um, this these recommendations does not advocate for terminating anyone. But what did you just say, Deborah? About natural, you know, like people retire, we don't we don't rehire that kind of thing. Yeah. It's through I, I I forget what what the words that we used before. Did you say a natural attrition? Was that yeah, attrition? Yep, that's that's yeah. the word right there. Okay. Yeah, these recommendations will work towards streamlining the departments to better serve everyone in Amherst. Mm. And after in Amherst, you know, this committee does not advocate for terminating anyone. But And now we add what's the, what's the line? But, um, this can be this can be done by natural attrition. Yeah. Yes. How how about transitioning some positions to crest through natural attrition? Just because I think I don't of, know. I, I don't know if, if it's necessarily that you know, like transitioning yeah. positions to yeah. crest mm -hmm. is just not 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 rehiring based on natural uh, attrition. Yeah, that that works. Because with Crest is a separate thing, right? Crest, we want it to be fully staffed. We want it to be a 24-7. We want it to be those things, which obviously it's not right now. Yeah. But um, 
But once it does have more hours and, and it does more, then the police need to do less. Mm -hmm. and, and they can do less because they don't have to worry so much about everything. Mm -hmm. And all of, uh, all of the, the entire community will be better served. I don't think we need to say anything more than what's there. We're good. I have a question on number seven, the yeah. added part of enter audio and video recording. Is that uh -huh. to make sure that they are recording and there's audio or that they're telling whoever they're making the vehicle stop on that they're being recorded and there's audio? That That is actually recording the interaction. So for them to make the public aware that there's a recorded interaction. Yes, because they they are required to tell people that they're being audio and video recorded. Okay. So excuse my ignorance, but aren't they also required to inform someone the reason for why they're being stopped? Is that not happening? They, they are. They have to give you a reason, but you know, to the early, to the the latter point or the earlier point, pretext. Um, for stopping. So if the audio and video recording is meant to add another layer of um, accountability. And I think, um, I think it was in California where they made the shift from a, an officer asking, do you know why I pulled you over to saying like, this is why I pulled you over. And I mean, it's been a long time since I've had a traffic stop, but I remember being asked, not told, but that was like 15 years ago now. So, yeah. So from the, from the videos I've seen um, for the stop, it, I, I don't see them asking the person because yes, it's like, how am I supposed to know that? Right. I think they tell you why you're, you're stopped. No oh, okay. Oh, thank you. So are we ready to make a motion? I would ask that we, um, the very last sentence, make its, its own paragraph, invite in Chief Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Pamela. I, um, I, since Lisette, since you're taking notes, um, I just wanted to make sure that you record that you need to know who made the motion and who seconded the motion and what the vote was. So that needs to be recorded in the minutes. Um, and there's some other specifics uh, that I can send to you, but just to make sure that happens. Okay. Okay, thank you. So in that case, I move that we adopt this letter. I second. Oh, I guess I have to call a vote. <laughs> Whoops. Um, Everald. Aye. Lisette. Yes. Deborah. No. I am a yes. So that's three to one. Wait, do we have a quorum? There's five of I thought there was five of us. What are so we are a quorum at four, but then what does the vote have to be? Um as long as you, you have a quorum, your vote is by simple majority. So the okay. motion would pass. Okay. So, and I believe the plan had been to send it to both the town manager and Chief Ting. And 
Is, is that then correct? it took town manager, chief ting, town council, send it to uh, the uh, publications to newspapers. I can do that. Um, so we have a Cress update on the agenda. Um, I know Camille had sent a update. Um, and I can share what she has, but I was a little confused because I thought she was going to be here. Yeah, I mean, um, she received the invitation to come tonight, but I and I have are we've been like two ships passing in the night. So I don't quite know why she was not able to attend, but she sent this um, late in the afternoon. I so. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so I think I think for the future, because, you know, she was at. The last meeting kind of just it was an intro meeting so she was there and and i remember saying um you know inviting her uh to our next meeting and obviously she knows that these meetings happen second tuesday of the month at 6 30 on zoom so you know i want to say publicly <laughs> that you know the expectation <laughs> is that she'll be attending these meetings um you know, on a monthly basis with us, because although, yes, wonderful, you know, sending in the report, um, you know, Crest is a critical, critical department um, that we have been assisting um, and helping through all of these different changes that have been happening. Um, and so it's going to be imperative for the Crest, the new Crest director to be at our meetings. I understand that we're going to be meeting with her individually. That's fine and dandy, wonderful. But that does not replace the need for her to be on these meetings on a monthly basis. Because one, we're able to talk and discuss and ask questions as a committee. And two, the community gets to hear, right? And a lot of community members that don't get to be on these meetings, they go to the recordings because they tell me they go to the recordings and they listen to the meetings. And also, you know, the, our recordings will get picked up by newspapers, yes, which is what we want. So we need the 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 Crest director present. Um, obviously, I will be communicating that to her on Friday when I meet with her of one one. But I I I, I see that as it's going to be problematic if if that doesn't happen. Obviously, if it happens every once in a while because you're busy, I get it. But it's every Tuesday. I mean, not every Tuesday, every month on the second Tuesday, 6.30. So hopefully uh, adjustments will be made so that this is, becomes a priority. Um. So I guess I can read the update that she sent. So it, it won't be interactive because I don't have the answers to the questions. Um. I don't know, Pamela, if you are so far away now that you're back to DEI that you don't want to have the knowledge or need to have the knowledge or if you might have any insight into anything. So I have um, really tried to step away. If there's a question that you ask or, um, and I know the answer, I'm happy to share it, but you know, my goal has been to really be at arm's length because I think that's best for the department as she creates her own you know, develops her team and sets her own leadership style. And I have really stepped away. So I haven't participated in any of their meetings. Um, they had the Harvard GPL. I did not go to any of those meetings. You know, I've really tried to create the space for her to, you know, direct the department as she see, sees fit. So she, and I would say, you know, during the, Obviously, the first week or so, I got more questions, but I haven't really received um, very many questions for her over the last two weeks. Today was actually the 30th, you know, her one month or, um, anniversary on the job. So um, if there's a specific question, I'll do my best to 
answer it, but I have not had that as my focus for the last 30 days. I can, so I think that's reasonable um, that you haven't been engaged given that you've been doing it for quite some while and in your, in your last meeting, we knew you wanted to get away. So I think that's reasonable. And, and I think given that we started very late, we table this and move on to some of the other things on the agenda. But I do want to say um, for the for the minutes and for um, discussions with her in our meetings. Um, so I, I heard what Lev had to say um, when she in the public comments. And um, I, I have a genuine concern that from everything she said, while I appreciate, you know, that she appreciated Cress, it very much, with the exception of the latter part where she said they didn't need to call the police because Cress was there, the majority of what she said sounded like Cress is providing social services. And that should be um, talked about with the Cress director because I, yeah, that was my that was my takeaway from Lev's presentation was that from Lev's comment, it sounded like Cress was doing a lot of social services type work as opposed to alternative to law enforcement kind of work. So, and for me, I want to add um, that when Allegra and I went to meet with Paul, we talked so, so substantively about Cress because, like I said, this is a, a critical department that we want to make sure, um, you know, it's really the marquee department, right, in CSWG's um, recommendations, and that's why we started with Cress. Um, and so we need to make sure that, um, you know, we're getting the information in, in regards to like the data, right? We need to get the data. This doesn't have any data. Um, so, you know, and 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 we showcase, even though, uh, you know, again, the data that we got through the public records requests, again, there, there was communication that it wasn't complete or there was some, regardless, at least we got some data, right? So, and we have to get it through the public records request. So on a monthly basis, we expect to get data in terms of what are the calls, what are the types, what is happening, what is Crest doing, and so on and so forth. And so that needs to be part of it. When we talked to Paul, we also talked about the fact that there needs to be that budget for, for Crest, for one, an assistant director, because we cannot go through this again, right? Where there's no clear number two, no person there, that if the director is not there, who's the one that, that does the job? So we need to make sure that an assistant director it gets put in place. We also need the hours upped. And, and if it can't be upped right in this minute, then possibly change. Because we even talked about not understanding why, because he said that, you know, well, there's, there's not calls because we talked about them being monitors in the school, right? Which again, is not their, their function. I understand about building relationships, but that's not the function or the vision of what we foresaw for, for, for Crest, for them to be lunch monitors at, you know, the, the, the middle school, right? And so that's something that, yes, there's a need right now because the schools are under budgeted. And so you need to get the schools fully, fully funded so that they can actually hire people to do those things. And so we need to make sure in terms of, okay, if they have the time because they're not doing anything during those hours, why are the hours eight to four thirty? Why are the hours, you know, one to eleven o'clock, which is when possibly there will be people who actually need to use Crest, you know? Because I even said it, I worked as an outreach worker, youth outreach worker in Chelsea, Massachusetts, and we I didn't start at eight because there would be no young people there. I started at like two, three, and then I worked until midnight. You see what I'm saying? Uh, what have you? You work the hours. You don't you don't do an a, a eight to five or whatever the, the case may be, you 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 tailor the hours based on the need, right? Um, of when the calls are coming in and so on and so forth. So right now, press is being utilized in certain ways because they don't have anything else to do. No, no, that, that needs to change. That needs to be, you know, revamped and relooked at. So we talked with 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 that with Paul, right? In terms of the funding. Um, in terms of, you know, what needs to happen for Crest and especially in terms of dispatch, again, you know, and the call. So all of these things we need to also talk with Camille about, 
I understand she's new, but obviously it's been a frustrating process for this past two years now that Crest has been in place. Um, and so, and, and there needs to be more movement uh, along those lines. And right now with, with Camille not being here, can't get any responses, so. So I would perhaps recommend that with, um, along with the letter and we can put this in like our after the thought packet just to have that you know in the public record. Um, Cause this is what was given to us as a Cress update. Um, Um, so the next thing was the crest. <laughs> Excuse me. The public records request. Um, and let me see if I can find that. So what are we doing? Um, I think the so there well, why don't we why don't we go over some of the agenda items that are still outstanding? We can figure out what it makes most sense to talk about. We have Crest Public Records request, uh, DEI update, review of consultant report on resident oversight board, youth empowerment center, community forum planning, school budget update. No, that was school update, budget update. Those were two separate things. Um, Pamela, was there anything else about from DEI as an update other than the events coming up? So I can speak to the current process for the resident oversight board. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I, you know, I'm just getting tired, so I don't know exactly when, um, but there was, uh, an RFP for the technical assistance part of the um, establishing the resident oversight board that went out. There were, um, uh, we did receive some responses to it. Those responses um, are required by statute to be reviewed. And that uh, review has taken place. Um, and the review is just to rank them according to the qualifications of the of the RFP. Um, and then that information is given back to the procurement officer uh, who will share the review with the town manager who will um, make a decision about um, a hire. And so all of that has taken place. The um, one of the things that Jennifer was able to do before her last day was she and I served as the reviewer. So we each separately reviewed the responses and sent that information into the procurement officer who um, has it and will, you know, at some point, I hope soon, make an, make an, have an, an appointment to schedule an appointment to meet with the town manager and they will be able to move forward. So. So if I may, when you say the technical aspects, you mean the literal day-to-day -day makeup of how the resident overboard should operate. Exactly. So the um, original RFP from over a year ago combined um, two um, portions. They were split. We were, it was that original RFP was unsuccessful. They were split. And then, so we have the two components um, and the, the review of the consultant report on the that's on your agenda is a review of the first RFP that was around community engagement and included the language in your letter to Chief Ting from Rabbi Deborah Kolodny. This uh, RFP is on um, 
on all of the technical aspects, like the selection of the resident oversight board, the creation of the policies, the training of the individuals who would serve, it would be everything necessary um, and in place to actually stand the board up, you know, to move it from conception to, um, to actuality. Do we, um, so I, 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 I saw that there was um, budgetary allotments for the resident oversight board. So is there a time frame um, to form this, an internal time frame to get this up and running? So I think that the time frame will depend on the town manager's selection. Um, um, it, I'm I'm not by statute allowed to speak a lot about the specifics of the of the two proposals, um, but I will say that they have there are presented they presented different time frames so that will will have an impact like who's who is whichever um, person or or organization is selected will uh, will have an impact on the on the time frame the. Uh, the RFP um, requested, um, and I obviously I do not think that we will make this deadline. The RFP, when it was submitted, um, had um, an expectation that there would be a resident oversight board up and running before the end of this fiscal year. So by June 30th, it's highly unlikely that you will um, will have, you know, in within the next six to seven weeks that there will be an, um, a resident oversight board up and running. Um, but I think that it's um, quite reasonable that one could could be done, you know, I'll say in the next six months, I you know, it just, it will depend, the time frame will depend on the selection of the uh, firm that's May, that is hired to do the technical aspects. Isn't there a isn't there a time frame that when RFPs go out that a decision has to be made on the RFP? Right, right. And so I think that we are coming up on again uh, against that deadline for making a decision. The um, I don't know the exact date, but the procurement officer provided a you know, Jen and I with the information to do the assessment, we were pretty timely in getting it, the assessment back to her. Um, she was out of the office for a week. So I think she's probably had those assessments all of maybe, you know, it's been less than a week, less than seven business days. So I don't know what her exact deadline is for meeting with the time, town manager, but it's moved along and that's where that's the stage where we're where we're at. So last question while hogging the mic. Is is the goal of this new RFP for this um selected committee to say um to literally write, so to speak, the rules and charge of the resident oversight board? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's for technical assistance. So it's to, um, you know, to to create the policies, the procedures, the training. We ask that um, in the RFP that um, they create a train the trainer model so that um, as uh, individuals went off the board, there would be capacity in the town to conduct training for future board members through the training materials and operations that were established during this first process. Okay, thank you. So let me um, jump in and pick up where whatever uh, left off. So um, one, can you share the uh, RFP with us, a copy of the RFP? Because um, I'd like to see the, the the specifics that you all invited in terms of the request for proposals. If you can share that with the committee. Yeah, a um, public document, so it should, I can, I'm certainly I can share, share that. Yeah, because you also, yeah, because they've shared it 
with us in the past. Uh, I, I believe when I was in CSWG and maybe even you know the previous one that you all did with um, when you all started out with it. So um, and then in the report that that um, was done by Deb, um, Rabbi Deb, um, you know it, she put it in there, and I'll just read from her kind of slide where it was basically delay has caused harm. Moving forward expeditiously is critical. You know, which is something that we've been saying, right? Ad nauseum, month in, month out, that you know, the the this the stalling just meet just continues to build mistrust in the community, right? And we're continuing to do that. Um, you know, the best way to regain it is to move forward quickly in establishing the 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 rob, you know. Um, the stalling implementation of resident oversight board is confusing at best and has damaged trust. I mean, not my words, uh, Rabbi Depp's words, right? And then she does have this, this part around addressing differences uh, of opinion, right? So through conversation, negotiation, seeking ex expert input, a potential path, step one, the CSSGC could write an initial ch a charge charter for the ROB and submit it to the town. And then there's a step two and there's a step three. So she actually made a recommendation that could get this going, jumpstart this so that we don't have to wait for, um, you know, the, this this other RFP, God knows how long it's going to take. And now you're telling me it's going to be another six months possibly and so on and so forth. Why can't we do that? Well, it's not my decision. So I can't answer that question. <laughs> so it's back to Paul. That's what you're telling me. I mean, so. So. It's not my decision. No. Okay, but wait, but you were charged though to 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 make Paul uh, rob a reality, and now you're telling me though that the the this process might take another six months. There's a there's a, there's by your first consultant right, that basically said that the delay is an issue, and then she talked about a possible other process. So I'm saying, okay, so she did a whole report. So is there going to be a response to her report then from the, the town manager to say, okay, well, you know, she did this report, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, what what, what, what the steps? So you're, you're, you're asking me questions that I, that I don't have the authority to answer. Like I, I cannot speak for the town manager I can only perform the functions that I'm allowed to perform under the charter in my job, which were to conduct the RFP, um, provide that information to the town manager. And, you know, so I cannot speak for what actions he's going to take um, I, for either that RFP or the, uh, or the, response that we've gotten to the technical ones to the technical so, so, so the thing is though we're in a conundrum here because when we went to talk to paul and i said why haven't you come to meet with cssjc he said it's because i have my representative there that's pamela <laughs> that is the one that responds to questions that we ask and so he says he, obviously he's a very busy person mm -hmm. so he doesn't have the time to come to these committee meetings because and so therefore he has representatives, right? That go on his behalf. So now I'm asking you questions and then you say you don't have the power to answer them. Right, or the answers, your, your, your question was whether the town manager is going to perform a specific action. Well, no, no, I, I'm and asking I, for a I response, can't, I can't, a response I can't, to the first report. Right, and That's I That's what can't, I'm asking for. Right, so I'm, I'm more than happy to ask him a question about his response to the first report, but I cannot speak for him. You know. And and when I did ask him when is resident oversight board going to be implemented, he said, we didn't have a time. So I guess I should be happy that you said six months because you know, when I asked Paul, you you didn't have a time even well, to say when it would be implemented. Actually in an earlier conversation with this committee, I had I had actually said that based on 
um, the release of the second technical RFP and what I hoped would be the response in the timeline that I personally felt that it would be a, a realistic expectation to, to, to have something up and running by the end of the fiscal year. And I think that I made that statement several months ago, but here we are, it's May 8th. And, um, you know, I can now, I now know that's an unrealistic expectation. Do I think it can happen, you know, within the next six months? I think that's a realistic expectation. But I only have certain controls and certain actions that I can take. And I've taken all of the ones that I, all of the actions that I can take to move this forward have been completed. Okay, so so I, I, I guess I guess how I want to finish this is just to say, you know, again, level of frustration, disappointment, uh, you know, not acceptable in terms of how things are getting done. Mm -hmm. um, the delay tactics, the fact that we had said from the beginning that all of the work had been done by, C by CSWG. You all did not want to listen. You wanted to do whatever you wanted to do. Now you have a report. Uh, from the consultant that you all hired to basically say the same thing that we said. And now there's no response to that. No, that's and not now we're continuing now to this other second phase, which again, there's really no timetable in terms of it. I'm sorry. I, you are hearing a level of frustration and right. anger. And yes, I, and yes so you are. Because I'm very disappointed. Let me finish. I'm very disappointed and not at all happy with the timetable, which is basically null and void. So I would disagree with you um, with your assertion that the timetable is null and void. There has been movement on this issue. Is it Has it moved um, in the way in which I expected it? Because I, if we were to go back, as I said, I think it's probably two or three months ago, reported to this committee that it was my expectation that the a resident oversight board could be up and running by the end of this fiscal year. But as I sit here now on May 8th, knowing what um, lies ahead, you know, I have to be honest and simply say, is that gonna is it gonna happen between now and June 30th? Probably not. But I also know that I have done everything that I can possibly do that's within my power as a director to move it forward. So I, I found the, um, the RFP and I shared it with everyone. Um, and the, so th the intent here was that the contract would have been established in April. And so that hasn't been done and expire on or before June 30th. So to your point, we're not gonna meet that, but there's a clause that allows an extension up to October 1st. So um, there is that essential quote unquote timeline in there because I, I imagine given that there is no decision made yet, then I mean, there's no way that this consultant is gonna be able to do all the important necessary work by June 30th to Deborah's point. You know? So we so yeah, I don't think we're gonna have a board by the start of fiscal year. Do we want to move forward then, if there's no other questions, to the um, Youth Empowerment Center? Yes, please. Pamela, do you have anything to um, share with us in regards to the Youth Empowerment Center? Yeah, um, I, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the Youth Empowerment Center is not within my purview. 
the town manager has stated that he would form a committee and would work on that issue. So it's not been something that the DEI office has been working on this last year. What about programming? I thought that you all were doing a survey and so on and so forth to figure out. Yeah, programming. and I I think I reported at the last at the last meeting that it's you know unfortunately there has been really no progress. Um, the um the survey had very few responses, um, and there has not been any progress on um as far as programming. Um, I do know that uh both Cress and DEI have committed to once again trying to establish some youth programming um, or youth empowerment programming in the fall. We have a couple of initiatives that we've um, outlined and are hoping that we will be able to support. Um, we once again are trying to share um, an AmeriCorps member to, to work specifically on this project. Um, the AmeriCorps uh, mission is to have youth-led youth empowerment programming. So it, it uh, aligns very nicely with their overall goal. Um, we do have a um, a youth, uh, an AmeriCorps member that has been selected to work with us. That person will start in, uh, in August. Good, then I'll be in touch with uh, Paul in regards, because that was one of the things that we did talk to him about when we met with him. And um, because the, the budget is sitting there for the for establishing the Youth Empowerment Center and nothing has, has happened in terms of that. And then with the youth programming, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm happy about the AmeriCorps, but again, you know, they come and go. So there's not going to be much consistency in terms of that. Um, um, so, you know, there needs to be a dedicated person there that's going to actually do that long term. And because with youth, as we know, you have to build trust with youth and the folks that are out there that are their mentors and the, the people who are there that have to work with them. And so if you don't have consistency in terms of the person that's going to really work and build that trust, it's not going to happen because I've done a lot of work, a lot of youth work. Um, and so it's going to be a lot of start and stops without a lot of um, you know, forward movement in regards to it. So I will, um, I plan to contact Paul and let him know, because I guess he said he wants to establish some type of task force or something. Um, and so I'm going to give, give him names of people for him to start ta staffing that task force. And he also says he wants to look at um, um, possible consultants, go through an RFP or something to look at establishing the the youth empowerment and so i have definitely people that i could send to apply for those things so again with the youth empowerment as as resident oversight board you know these things needed to happen was yesterday and you know we're still at at, at the stage of where we're at i've already stated my frustration you know i need to do it again So, Ms. Young, the survey exists. There is yeah. an actual survey. There, the survey exists. It was shared with the committee. There were changes made to it that were based on um, conversations with this committee. Um, I mean, I think for a number of different multitude of reasons, um, it just did not gain a lot of traction um, in the schools this year. And so there were very few responses. And, um, you know, quite frankly, I think I said this at the last meeting, we did not have, um, you know, we did not get the work that we had hoped for and expected from our AmeriCorps member. And uh, unfortunately, I also was distracted because I was trying to work with Cress. So, the DEI department as a whole department has suffered quite a bit over the last, you know, six to seven months. And I, and quite frankly, I think that that will continue for quite a while since we're now a department of one. And um, so there's a lot to be done with, um, you know, few people to do it. You, I, oh, you, you broke, broke up. up. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, is the website in the town of Amherst? Uh, sorry, is the survey in the town of Amherst website? Um, the the survey I do not believe is on the town of Amherst website. It was shared with um educators at the middle school and at the uh and at the high school. Um, through some uh, educators that had connections to um, to Jennifer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I think um, if there are any other questions, then we have the 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 two things that we could kind of put into one would be like we could talk about the community forum planning, which would mean like some dates and just discussing that. And then the school update, which it could be school budget update, right? You can coalesce that into one. Yes. So, um, but why don't, why don't we start with the school budget update? Because I know that obviously that has a, a, a timetable. Um, Allegra, do you have um, updates to share about that? Um, so there was a meeting on Monday of the town council that had the, um, Paul gave his budget presentation and, um, basically right now the towns of Shootsbury and Leverett have voted to a 6% assessment to fund the regional schools rather than a 4% assessment. Um, Paul has included a 4% assessment rather than 6%, um, but Pelham has their meeting this Saturday. Um, and I believe that the finance committee there has recommended the 6% as well. So it was my understanding from our conversation with Paul was that if three of the four towns voted for the 6% assessment method that it would be adopted. Um, but then in terms of anything else for DEI or CRESS, it did not appear that there were any staffing increases for those departments. So there are not any more responders being added at this time, nor is the structure of the leadership changing that I could tell. Um, and I believe when I asked him, because I thought I had seen a job posting recently for administrative assistant for the Crest Department, um, I believe that he said that that was going to be the role rather than assistant director. Um, so that is my understanding and then um Pamela um so I was just going to speak for a minute on the assistant direct uh on the um administrative assistant position mm -hmm. um one of the recommendations from the interim leadership team was a change in the crest department structure um the the original structure um, consisted of a director, a program assistant, and um, and then a grant implementation manager. Uh, and our suggestion for the from the interim leadership team was for a director, an assistant director and an administrative assistant. The program assistant role, um, in my opinion, combined um, duties that would be an assistant director duties with a, um, with a administrative assistant uh, role. Uh, the press director is scheduled to have her meeting with the um, finance committee, I believe, um, I think it's, I I have mine on Friday. So I think she's a week, uh, a week out. Um, we got our schedule uh, maybe Tuesday of this week of when our appointments were. And so I have um, offered um, to the Crest director that if she'd like 
me to accompany her to that meeting, I would because uh, Kat Newman and I are the ones who, you know, put in the budget request, wrote the language. And so I think that's one place where I might be able to be helpful to them, but, you know, so we will see. Um, but that's certainly some, I think the leadership, the interim leadership team um, certainly recognize the need to have um, an, an assistant director position and has been advocating for that as well as um, advocating for uh, administrative support for the department. Uh, so let me see. I believe that there is a public forum on the budget. Now I have to double check the date. Um, I want to say it's is it the 13th? Hold, please. Um, so, uh, Allegra, while you're looking at that, I wasn't able to attend the meeting on Monday because obviously I was already uh, double booked. Uh -huh. uh, were there a lot of public comments that a lot of people get on to? There were. I think there were at least... 15 to 15 people that spoke um good yeah and again they spoke in support of the school budget um and that was really other than there's something about roads that need to be adopted by the town two people commented about that but the rest of the comments were about the schools so um good. So is there a kind of a deadline? I know you said um, but the Pelham will be voting, but, you know, um, will we know for sure what's going to happen? So once the, the Pelham votes, let's say they vote the 6%, then will it automatically mean that Amherst will have to do 6%? Because I'm still will. like, I, I understand. I mean, when we talked to Paul, we did ask him about the, the budget, obviously for the school, since this is a, a critical need too. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I understand, you know, that Paul described why it is that he did the 4%, but for me, it still, you know, doesn't make sense to me because it's something that, you know, the, the search committee, I mean, the school committee, along with the uh, um, um, interim superintendent, you know, obviously that's what they put forward in terms of the needs. The school is critical need in, in, our, in our town, especially having programs that, a lot of the cuts were going to be impacting those that are, you know, around social justice, languages, um, inclusivity, and so on and so forth. So, you know, the fact that Paul went and, and um, shared the 4% as opposed to 6% budget is still flabbergasting to me. Right. So it looks like the public forum on the budget is on Tuesday, May 21st at 6.30. And then it looks like the finance committee is supposed to talk with DEI on the 14th at two, that's a Tuesday, and then review the public safety departments on Friday the 17th at 10 a.m. Um, and then the regional schools on Friday, May 31st at 10 a.m. And then the final vote will be on Ju Monday, June 28th. It's kind of close. Um, so I think if we wanted to make an impact on the 21st and the 31st, and I will send the calendar out to people it's available on the town website but it's sometimes nice to just have a link yeah uh, and if you could just like just say that the the key um meetings that would be important i know i'm i'm out of town on the 21st so i'm not gonna yeah. be able to yeah. to to join in but if there's another date um that would be important then 
Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, I think that's all that there is to say about the budget and the school budget. Um, so the community forums that we've been they've been on our agenda for a long time and we haven't gotten to. Um, and we had talked about wanting to do forums actually like in the community, not just for the community, but like out in like apartment complexes or other areas that would feel like a more safe space for people to come than maybe the town room or the bang center. Um, so if we were to plan something what month is it? It's May. Do we want to look into the summer or is that tricky for people? Yeah, I think we just need to think about when is it that, that we think we're going to get most people because right now with the community forum, we're actually going to go into the community, right? In right. terms of, of having. So we also need to kind of think about where we're thinking of holding these mm -hmm. Um and, you know, maybe like maybe if we are going to do a community forum, if we're able to have a budget. So like maybe we do like, you know, have food and, you know, mm -hmm. some sandwiches and, and you know, juice and water or whatever, you know, if we go into, let's say, Village Park or whatever, mm -hmm. um, then I think that would be good, like to do it in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but we just we need to be strategic to kind of think about when, because we know that folks will probably be doing vacation. So we probably want to do it before, maybe like June, before um, the kids are out, out of school, because that's when I think people will be like, you know, vacation time, this and this and this, if we were going to be thinking of having some some town forums, or then I think we should probably should just wait for the fall, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when people are back, you know, like maybe either mid-September to, to late September or something like that. Yeah, I don't think July, August. July, August are heavy, yeah, you know, they're tricky. vacation time and, and things like that. And we're going to mm -hmm. lose people. Yeah. So. And then let's see, the last day of school is June 20th. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if we're rushing it to, if we try to. Yeah. I mean, I think it could be helpful to try and push it to the fall just because, well, and are we envisioning something like the time that we were in the town room with Earl and the crest responders, or are we just thinking that it would be us as the CSSJC? Yeah, I think I think more kind of more kind of like community oriented. So if we're going into Village Park, we're gonna go in, and you know what I'm saying. It's gonna be more conversation. Just go in, yeah. like I said, maybe have some food. You know, maybe if they have like places that have like a community room, right? Mm -hmm. So we come in, and it's us, and it's really gonna be a conversation. But we do need to make sure we have someone that's gonna take notes because last time we didn't have anyone that took notes. If we have, if we, you know, obviously we have to have the interpreters. And, you know, if we have any information to share, especially around Crest or whatever, or any other services, um, social justice focused services, then we would bring pamphlets and things like that, you know, share resources. But I think that that would be like some of the main things that we want, we'd, we'd want to do to obviously get a conversation going, right? Um, and then, but I don't think we need to make it, you know, as formal. Right. Yeah, it's more to a conversation, share information too, right? Status of where things are at, but but more conversation style, not presentation style. Right. So yeah, I think I think as we're we're talking about it and processing it, I think it'd be better for us to have some time, really think it through. We need to connect. I think in the meantime, right? We need to connect with folks, really think about where we want to, to go. We need to connect with with people that are in the, those communities that can be as like a liaison, an ambassador with us. Because obviously we need to be invited in, you know, we can't just show up and things like that, you know. Um, and then obviously put out the word 
um, so that we have a good group of people there um, for us to, to have a conversation with. So I think if we do it kind of like mid-September to like late September, not later than that, then I think the weather is still good, you know, and then we, we have a little bit of options as opposed to if you wait until October, November, then we're getting into the cold months and can get more complicated. So I see like the 14th or the 21st are Saturdays, if that would work mm -hmm. for people. 14th, 21st. Yeah, I think we should just put a hold okay. on those two date, those two dates for now. Okay. And then um and then we can we can see once we kind of communicate with um the liaisons, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Um and so it sounds like the where will obviously some sort of community based place, but mm -hmm. we'll yeah, because that was the feedback that we had that, you know, yeah. we should do it in some of the community of rooms in, you know, like, you know, different different places that. Uh, and I forgot who it was that said that they had like some connections there, but we can think more about it. Yeah. And then I guess the other thing is budget, <laughs> because do we have that? <laughs> but you're saying budget, this is for what? Budget for what? Like if we were to do food or. Oh, yeah. No, we definitely need a budget. We need a budget for the interpreters and we need a budget for food. And like child care. Pamela. So um, I think that there are probably a couple of uh, options for uh, budget support for the for the community forums. Okay. Um, I'm going to lean first, and of course I can't make this commitment, but uh, the uh, Department of Public Health grant that is funding CRESS does um, include funds and a requirement that they hold for public forums. This has been a new um, requirement, or I, I, sh I don't know if, I sh if new is the right word, but they've clarified um, and refined the, the grant over the last uh, six, seven months. And so they've made it quite clear that there's an expectation. So Crest would have the ability to provide um, to support an event like that because they have it's part of their mandate through the the grant of course um whether they receive the grant for next year is up in the air um uh currently uh, the the last time that there was discussion about the the the, the state budget um the governor had had stricken the funding for these types of programs from from the budget so um, but if they receive fundings from DPH, they will have funds to do that. Um, the funds for the translation services came from an earmark um, from um, Representative Dom, and there's still um, funds available through that earmark um, to support translation services. Um, and, you know, We'll see where the DEI budget sort of ends up as far as supporting for um, for food or uh, for childcare. But those are some options for funding for the for the public forums. And obviously, as I said, I can't commit um, the Crest budget, but um, I know that 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 was part of the requirement of the grant, assuming that they continue to get their grant funding. All right, so there are some options potentially. Um, so I'm noticing the time, it's 9.20. Are we feeling like, I guess we didn't really talk about the consultant report on the resident oversight board. Um, well, I talked about it a little bit. Remember, I went into it a little bit, but yeah. not, yeah. We didn't go into it extensively. But I thought that she had presented, didn't she present this, Pamela? Do you know if she presented this somewhere? Because it's PowerPoint slides. 
So um, a requirement of the RFP was was that there would be a presentation to the town manager and either the full town council or some um, subset of the town council, and that has not occurred yet. Um, oh, okay. I think, um, primarily because the, um, as you know, the town manager was out for several weeks for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. So that's the why there's been a delay there. Okay. Well, when she does um, present, um, can you let us know so that we can join the the, the meeting? Because obviously we'd be interested in, in hearing her presentation. Um, yes, if, um, I will. I'll let you know when I when I find out. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying whenever it, it comes yeah. about, you know, because like you said, since it is part of the RFP, she will be doing it at some point. So yeah, if you can give us a heads up with, with a little bit of lead time when you find out even if it's a few days or whatever, you know, that will be helpful because I know, you know, you'd want to attend if we're, if we're available. So our hope for the next meeting would be that Chief Ting will come talk to us and we will mm -hmm. talk about all the things in our letter plus mutual aid um I'm just looking at the date it would be june 12th so um the the mutual aid has to be an actual agreement so maybe okay. we can get it before chief thing okay. comes okay so ask if there is a copy of the mutual yeah. aid agreement available or... And I'll go on their website and search around to see if I can find okay. it. Yeah. Um, so the June twelfth, six thirty. Um, do we have any additional public comment? There are still seven attendees in the audience. Uh, we have one hand raised, we have two hands raised, we have three hands raised. Good question. Was Chief Ting already invited and accepted? He was not yet invited, um, but that is something that I can reach out to him. Yeah, Allegra, can you can you do that and just CC yeah. me on it? Yeah. Um, inviting uh, Chief Ting. And then um, Pamela, will you let Camille know that we, we're, we're hoping and really expecting um, her to attend the next meeting or do should Allegra and I also invite her to attend the next meeting? Um, she's aware, um, as I said, I just did not have a chance to connect with her. So I don't know what, but I sent her an invitation for tonight's meeting and she is aware of the meetings. Um, so I'm going to bring Martha into the room. Oh, we can't hear you, Allegra. Oh, um, oh now we can hear you. <laughs> Hello, this is uh, Martha Hanner from District 5. And I had a few things to say. First of all, uh, on behalf of the League, I wanted to invite you all to our next Judy Brooks uh, conversation, which is going to be on the evening of May 14th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And the link is on the League of Women Voters website, and it's going to be with Jackie Wallace. Most of us know her as the director of the wonderful Gospel Choir, but she also has an amazing number of other talents and, and things she's done over her lifetime. It will be a chance to uh, hear about that and honor her okay and then a uh, question to to pamela the interim report of about cress is that something that's public of publicly available if i um the I, i'm not quite sure it, what you mean by interim report are you uh, I'm asking? Asking, yeah i mean the interim committee uh for cress was going to give their report at some point. And so I was just wondering if that was. Uh, sure, so the, it, it, um, 
as it turns out, we did not write a final document. We oh. ended up um, creating a continuity book um, to you, Chief Nelson's uh, terminology. And so uh, it was not, it wasn't a final report. It was um, all of the information that we thought would be really helpful to the new Crest director um, sort of summarized and in two large notebooks. Um, so it, there is no re there is no report. Okay. Yes, but you did say that you had recommended to our town manager the position of assistant director for Chris. Yes, I wanted, to, I wanted to let you folks know that the uh, racial justice committee of the League of Women Voters also recommended to Paul that an assistant director is really necessary to make Chris function well. So that we did that. And then finally, I just wanted to pose the question uh, to um, you folks, you don't have to answer, uh, regarding the police chief. And the question really is for CSSJC, what uh, are your goals and how can CSSJC be most effective in bringing about changes? And so if you think of it from that point of view, then, you know, how do you want to interact with Chief Thing? I'm, th I'm thinking of the letter that you've just composed. Is that the most effective way to bring about, you know, the changes that you want to see and how you can best interact with him to, you know, make positive changes? So that's just an open, uh, you know, question to him, to you, for <laughs> your dealings with, with him. So thank you all for all your work. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Pat. Okay, it's me again. I'll be very brief. Um, thank you all for your meeting tonight. Um, lots of information to digest. Anyhow, I want to announce that Black Business Association of Amherst Area, BBAA, my group, <clears throat> will be hosting a Juneteenth on June 19th at Mill River from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And we have <clears throat> a number of sponsors. So our town claims that they're trying to do community engagement, but I don't say it happening consistently. We have my group, which is a rich resource for our town and our town administration has decided not to engage with the only strong, solid, Black Association in our town, okay? I just want to put that out. In fact, with the upper funds, BBAA had proposed to use some of the money for youth programming. There are resources in our town that our town government is not tapping. And the main reason is for retaliation and also if a group is not status quo, they won't collaborate. Collaboration, community engagement is thrown, those words are thrown around so freely in our town, but from whose perspective? Okay, I just wanna put that out. My first public comment tonight was about our town manager who doesn't care about social justice and when I open my mouth and say something, I know exactly what I'm talking about. We've seen that the right by Deb report is collecting dust. And the only reason is that our town manager probably doesn't like the report that supports CSSJC and CSWG recommendation period is consistent. If it were the other way around, this would have been all over the 
the town and media, but this is not the report that our town manager, you know, wanted. I'll say the way it is. We're still talking about resident oversight, board not establishing. This is all delay and tactics. It is not a priority when it when projects and programming that impacts black people in our town, it doesn't get priority. It's as simple as that. I thank you guys for what you're doing. Keep pushing. You have, you know, you know, support from, from the voiceless. People who are too afraid, obviously, for retaliation, they can't, they don't want to speak up. I also um want to state that in terms of um making excuses for not having funding for programming. I mean, it's sad that at CSS JC meeting tonight, you know, Coach here is wondering where money will come from to do programming. To me, it's that's BS. I'm sorry, because I know our town is, you know, has the resources. We shouldn't even be asking, how are we going to fund a community forum? Here's my su suggestion in one of the com community forum for you guys to consider. BBAA is having Juneteenth. Whenever BBA put out an event, you know, we get good turnout. It might be one of the avenue to do that, but we have to, it has to be on BBAA terms. We cannot allow the town administration to tell us what to do, but it has to be collaboration from the people affected. Okay, we have to, you know, be part of it, like be on the same table and not for the town administration telling, you know, how the forum is going to be. I can see BBAA collaborating with CSSJC, and to see, yeah, and not the town manager trying to formulate how she, he will want the forum to be. And I'll stop talking. In summary, Ms. Pamela, you're a black woman. You are aware of, you know, BBAA existing. Use our resources. That's all I'm saying. We want you to succeed and we want you, you know, to, you know, reach out consistently to all stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, and we have Lauren again. Uh, they're moving around. All right, there we go. Sorry. Yes, hi. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I I have to agree with everything that Miss Pat said, and and thank you because this is really hard and a shame to to listen to 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 see how hard it is to get the things that um, the community needs. Uh, but I stayed on uh, because I wanted to um, add um, information about the the youth workshops that it was in collaboration with um, Amherst Rec, um, the outreach coordinator, uh, Becky Demling, um, who helped with communications. The workshops are free um, of cost to you and um, those who participate, but it was actually um, a Springfield organization called the Youth Mental Health Coalition um, that works um, and trains youth on um, different community um, topics um, that deal with health. And, and so um, it's really, you know, because of them that the, the workshops are being put together. Um, I also um, connected everyone. And I also feel like... Hello? Oh. Did she drop off? Yeah, I think so. Uh-oh. Because we started losing her a little bit, whether yeah. maybe it's her Wi-Fi. Here she is. Oh, there she is. 
sorry, I, I got dropped. Um, I I just wanted to share. I know that it's hard to do a lot of work with just one person, um, but I feel like if there could be created a youth service office under the CRES or under DEI, instead of like a um, AmeriCorps member being, you know, someone who's supposed to implement some youth services or youth programming, that would be a better way to bring about the, the things that, um, you know, communities need, like the, the one I live in, where there's a lot of young families and a lot of youth who need to know about their rights, need to know, you know, how to communicate with authorities and so forth. And, and just to, like you said, connect with um, adults that they can trust and go to when, when they need help. Um, I have some other things to say, but I'm trying to be brief, but I just feel like where is the where is the funds that are supposed to be attached to these plans and these programs? And why don't we still have uh, the $500,000 allocated to a program? I, I, I just, it's just a shame to me that, you know, we're still trying to, to figure out and do surveys and trying to find what we're going to do when, when, I think we, we have had enough time to do that, but thank you so much. And um, as a pan, I'm just trying to to contribute what I can, the time that I can and the energy that I can. And I thank you for your work too. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. All right. There is anyone, Ms. Pat, do you still have something more to say or is your hand still up? Um, then if nobody else has any public comment they want, oh, there's Ms. Pat. I don't think she's, it's a comment. Um, may I add something to what um, Laura just said? She yes. actually did, um, and, and I'm not responding to be in compliance with the rules. Um, so as I was thinking about looking at the agenda, we talked about um, Youth Empowerment Center. Mm -hmm. um, and thinking about youth empowerment, I remember, um, I think I did it three years in a row. Um, I, I I was part of the, the bankruptcy court that went into the Northampton High School um, and did like a presentation on um, credit and finances to high school seniors. And I, I don't know if Amherst has any similar such program. So maybe we can add that to the agenda and have a conversation around that because I think that does actually fall under youth empowerment. Absolutely. Um, and it's something to discuss with school leadership. And I know this one that I've done over the years has been sponsored by the Hampshire County Bar Association, and I can ask about that if that is something that they've ever done with the Amherst School District. And of course, I'll be willing to volunteer to do, um, go in and have those conversations. It would be awesome. And yes, I think it falls into the category of youth empowerment. <laughs> Miss Pat. Did you have anything else to add? Yes. You can go ahead, Ms. Pat. You're muted. Pat, you're muted right now. I have nothing to say. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Not to say, yeah. In that case, I think it's time to adjourn this meeting. Adjourn. Mm -hmm. um, it is 9.42 and the CSSJC has adjourned. Thank you and good night. Thanks, everyone. Everybody. Thank Bye. you for your patience. Bye.